Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So the Florida Panthers have won the Stanley Cup. And no, this video is not pre-recorded. The Florida Panthers won tonight, 2-1. to one. Connor McDavid won the con Smythe. And I thought, instead of breaking down the game, because not saying the game was formulaic, but nothing really, like, out of the ordinary happened, I thought Florida was the better team for the first two periods, ended up finishing two of their chances, versus the Edmonton Oilers only scoring one goal, and just shut it down in those final 10 minutes. I I'm not going to make a full video on that. I thought that we would talk about what I what is far more intriguing to me and that is the job that Bill Zito has done I think that he is the unsung hero because although yes the players at the end of the day win the Stanley Cups the coaches are a very very important the architect of this team what Bill Zito has done coming in on September 3rd of 2020 to what he built now I'm not saying the Florida Panthers were in this absolutely horrendous situation like dark dark days they had some solid pieces but the way that he completely transformed this team I don't think that's an exaggeration to say is just so so goddamn impressive in my opinion because when looking at the Florida Panthers when they hired Bill Zito in 2020 they had not made the actual playoffs they lost in the qualifying rounds to my New York Islanders since 2016 where they also lost to my New York Islanders got upset as the division winners they only made the playoffs one time before that they were genuinely the Arizona Coyotes of the NHL. They, they, they were in that tier with Arizona. Arizona had more playoff success. What was it, 2011, 2012, where they made the conference finals? The Florida Panthers were an absolute joke. And even though that they had some solid players like Alexander Barkov, Jonathan Huberto, and Aaron Ekblad that they got in the early 2010s, it was obvious that this core kind of didn't have what it takes. So they brought in a guy like Bill Zito who radically changed it. I'm going to go through some of his biggest moves because although I'm not going to say it's a perfect uh, GM tenure that he's had considering the 2022 deadline, which we can talk about. Claude Giroux and uh, Ben Chirot, some of the worst deadline deals gave up way too much. The other moves, basically every other move that he made during his tenure has been absolutely fantastic. It is a masterclass in trading, signing, waiver pickups. It is amazing what he has done in terms of turning this team into a team that I think could easily win another Stanley Cup in the next three years. I'm not ready to say that they're going to go back to back, but I see no reason. Most of these players are between the ages of 25 to like 30. They're key pieces for the most part. This team is going to be a high level contender for the next four to five years, mainly because of Bill Zito's fantastic management. And when looking at it, it started with like literally his first signing in 2020. By the way, he was there. Bobrovsky got signed in 2019. That wasn't Bill Zito, so I'm obviously not counting that. But when looking at the fantastic Fantastic first deal, kind of first massive deal that he did make. It was Carter Verhage. He signed Carter Verhage, who only had like 10 points in 50 games on the 2020 Tampa Bay Lightning. Didn't really play that much of a role in their Stanley Cup win. He signed him to a two-year deal worth only $1 million. What did Carter Verhage do in his first goddamn season as a Florida Panther? As, as a Panther, he ended up scoring 18 goals, having 18 assists for 36 points in 43 games during the COVID-shortened season. Walked in, became a legit top six forward, first liner, putting up around 35 goal, 35 is his pace and again this guy got him as an RFA on the open market when looking at it Tampa Bay didn't want to re-sign him fantastic and I also although this wasn't a signing or anything his extension to Carter Verhage was also fantastic a three-year deal worth 4.156 million dollars he has obviously smashed that when looking at what he's done in the last three years he has five overtime goals for this goddamn team that is already like tied for the third most of all time with guys like Patrick Kane although maybe he didn't have the best Stanley Cup final heading into this game what does he do for your team he, he gets the first goal gets you on the board when you really needed that first goal in this game has a beautiful deflection what a goddamn signing first you sign him for two years at one million dollars literally no money at all basically the league minimum and he immediately becomes a first liner and then even at 4.16 million dollars he's arguably been an eight million dollar player during this three-year time basically throughout it just amazing by Bill Zito. What also did he do in the 2020 well, in the 2021 season? He ended up signing uh, or wavering, not even signing, wavering Gustav Forsling from the Carolina Hurricanes. Carolina did not want him anymore. Or was it Chicago? It might have been Chicago. I forget which one it was. But he gets him on waivers. Then he immediately after the season signs him to a two-year deal worth a two-year a three-year deal worth 2.66 million dollars. What does Gustav Forsling develop into? Even last year 
year, he was a very, very good top pairing defenseman. This year, a legitimate top 50 defenseman in the entire NHL. Another amazing pickup. Again, a waiver claim. He gets a guy like Gustav Forsling, and now he's about to start a $5.75 million deal, which is also looking fantastic if he, continue what, if he continues what he's been doing the last couple of years. This guy is legitimately a $7, $8 million defenseman, arguably, especially after this playoff run. He's really solidified himself, probably as Florida's number one guy. Also, during the 2021 season, what does he do? He trades for Brandon Montour. What does he give up? A goddamn 2021 third round pick. Brandon Montour for a third round pick. Montour last year, 74 points, massive in their Stanley Cup final run this year. Not as quite as productive offensively, especially because he had some injuries at the start of the season, but still a very, very good top pairing defenseman key to them during their Stanley Cup run. And what did it cost? It only cost a goddamn third round pick. And again, Brandon Montour was not making that much money over the last couple of years, only $3.85 million. Bill Zito identified that and made a splash in terms of acquiring Brandon Montour. And it looks like an absolute steal. Also during the 2021 trade deadline season, He goes out and gets, no, Sam Reinhardt, whoops, wrong Sam. Sam Bennett, he goes out, we'll get to Sam Reinhardt. He goes out and gets Sam Bennett for a second round pick that ends up being the 61st pick in the draft because they win the President's Trophy the following year. But also, I don't even know who Emil Henneman is, but he gets Sam Bennett, who at the time, most people thought was a complete bust. Sam Bennett, his career high in Calgary was like 35 points and he was trending downwards. He was genuinely stuck in that bottom six for the Florida Panthers. Bill Zito identifies this guy is a very physical. He has a mean streak to him, and I think he does have some skill. He's just not getting utilized properly in Calgary. Brings him in. He immediately right off the rip. He had like 15 points in his first 10 games for the rest of the season in 2021. And then by the next year, he has like 47 and 70. He's just been, not saying he's some superstar, like even a Carter Verhage, but he is just a fantastic 45 to 50-ish point guy. And that guy that is an absolute pest come playoff time. And what did it cost you? The 61st overall pick and just some bullshit prospect. Another masterclass by Bill Zito in the summer of 2021 after they lose in the lose in the second round, I believe, to the Tampa Bay Lightning. I think they lost. No, maybe it was the first round. I don't know. They lost to Tampa Bay Lightning in the 2021 playoffs. But again, after making the playoffs, after not making the playoffs for five goddamn years under Bill Zito, his first year, fantastic. Then he goes out and pulls the trigger on a Sam Reinhardt deal. And I'm going to be honest, this deal isn't like an absolute steal. He does give out very good pieces in Devin Levi as well as Yuri Coolidge. But Sam Reinhardt's been an absolute stud for them. First season, 34 goals, 48 assists, 82 points. Helps them win the President's Trophy. The following year, 31 goals, 36 assists. Uh, 70, uh, 67 points. And then this year, 57 goddamn goals. And similarly, like Verhage was having a good playoff run before the cup final, not the best cup final, only had one or two goals and three points. It wasn't that good. But what does he do? He gets the goddamn game winning goal. Your 57 goal scorer shows up in a massive way. So even if Devon, De- Devin Levi turns into even like a Vesna caliber guy and Coolidge turns into a fantastic top six guy, Bill Zito does this nine times out of 10. It was a fantastic move by him and his staff. Now in 2022, again, they do pull the trigger on the Claude Giroux deals in the Ben Chirot deal. I can't defend that. That was bad, especially the Ben Chirot one. Claude Giroux actually was very good for them. They end up getting swept in the second round by the Tampa Bay Lightning. But what does he do? What does Bill Zito do instead of saying, we won the President's Trophy, we can run it back like we see so many goddamn teams do in the NHL? Fuck that. He goes out and makes one of the biggest trades in NHL history. He goes out and trades for Matthew Kachuk, giving up Jonathan Huberto coming off 116-point season. Mackenzie Wieger, who is developing into a very, very good top-pairing defenseman, and he still is a very good top-pairing defenseman, on top of Cole Schwint in a first-round pick. You would have thought... If people if people pitch this mock trade, you would expect Matthew Kachuk to be get, the Matthew Kachuk to get the first round pick, like Matthew Kachuk in a first round pick for those two players, because some people thought Huberto was far better than Matthew Kachuk. I did not think that. I always liked this deal for the Florida Panthers, considering Huberto needed an extension, Uyghur needed an extension. They were entering their thirties. Matthew Kachuk was twenty four years old, and they signed an eight year nine point five million dollar deal, which is already looking like one of the best in the entire NHL. But again, Bill Zito recognizes. This core is not good enough. I'm going to go get younger. I'm going to go get a far better deal instead of paying a guy after a career year that is a winger and doesn't play two, uh, doesn't have a two-way game, doesn't have a mean physical streak, got tossed around in the Tampa Lightning series. I think he had like one assist. So Bill Zito realizes, 
I'm going to trade that guy. I'm not going to hold on to Mitch Marner, Jonathan Huberto for that long going forward. I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to make this happen. And he does with Matthew Kachuk. And immediately after, they make the Stanley Cup the next season. Now, when looking at it, they didn't really do much in this offseason of 2023. They didn't really go like that aggressive, but even with his under the radar deals, they go out and get a guy like Evan Rodriguez on a four year deal at $3 million. First season, 39 points in 82 games. Very, very good both ways. Very good middle sixer. Shows up so massive for this team in the Stanley Cup final. What did he end up having? Like four goals and two assists. The ideal middle sixer of a championship team. Absolutely loved this signing at the time and it really came to fruition. He also went out and got guys like OEL, uh, Anthony Stolarz. I played a massive role in terms of them winning the Atlantic Division, although they probably beat the Boston Bruins in the second round regardless if they have home ice. But when looking at it, Stolarz had a 925 this season and he signed him on like a one-year deal at $2 million. And then at the deadline, I know that Paris Angle did kind of fall into his lap. I'm not going to like absolutely victory lap this, but the fact that he only gave up, well, now it's two thirds actually, but a third and a fourth at the time. Now it's two thirds for Vladimir Tarasenko, a veteran guy to be on their third line on top of getting a guy like Kyle Pozo, my childhood hero that is now a Stanley Cup champion at the deadline. He doesn't go massively all in like he did in 2022, in part because he didn't have a ton of picks like back in 2022, but still he's so economical in terms of what trading mid-round picks for actual impact guys instead of giving up these absolutely obscene prices for guys that are only going to be on your team for one year. He learns from his mistakes. That's the other thing. Although he fucked up in 2022, he learned from his mistakes. He did not keep on doing the same thing. So I just, Bill Zito, man, best general manager in the entire NHL at this point. I don't know how you don't see that. I understand guys like Breeze Bois has two Stanley, has two Stanley Cups and he was, he made some fantastic moves when looking at it. But right now in terms of a guy running my, running my team, I would want no other guy besides Bill Zito. The way that he has knocked out every single long-term uh, trade, a long-term signing, yes, some of the deadline deals have not been that good, but he has just been fantastic. And as a result, instead of, again, the Florida Panthers were, actually, no, whoops, wrong thing. The Florida Panthers, they were in a solid spot. If they had an okay general manager, I'm sure they would have been like a solid playoff team, probably, considering Huberto, Barkov, and Ekblad were all hitting their stride as well as Uyghur. But him coming in, him being so aggressive, I, being able to identify the problems with this team has allowed them to truly transform into a contender. And of the last three seasons, they're by far the most successful team in the entire NHL. When looking at it, 2022 President's Trophy, last year's Stanley Cup Final, and this year's Stanley Cup. You look at Colorado, although the 2022 Stanley Cup, they lost in the first round last year, lost in the second round this year. Vegas didn't make the playoffs in 2022, lost in the first round uh, in 2024. So when looking at it, Bill Zito came in, and within a year, they have had by far the best three-year stretch in the entire NHL. So, shout out to the Florida Panthers for winning the Stanley Cup. Again, the players played fantastic. Paul Maurice was a great coach for them. Really the right guy at the right time. But when looking at it, Bill Zito truly built this team into the absolute juggernaut that they are. So I just wanted to give Bill Zito my flowers. I love great general managering, so I wanted to shed some light on that. But let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? It's it's just fantastic to watch South Florida represent in a guy like Bill Zito win the Stanley Cup. No water bottles are getting absolutely smashed tonight. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about it? I'll be seeing the next one.